Thank you, choir and drama team. Thank you very much. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his only begotten son. How you doing, Drew? Psalm 23, ladies and gentlemen. Psalm 23. We're going to read the entire psalm. This is our last message for some time to come from Psalm 23. And so I want to invite you to enjoy this great passage one more time. And we're going to conclude with the last half of the last verse this morning. Scripture says this. You want to read out loud with me? It's up there on the screen if you need it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our Father, we do pray that you'll speak to us this morning. We pray that you'll make clear your word. We give you all honor and glory and praise through your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask it in his great name. Amen. Well, you can be seated. We have gone the full gamut with this. We have begun with a shepherd and its sheep. And the sheep learning the ways of the shepherd and the sheep learning that the shepherd is the one who is sovereign in its life. You and I have a shepherd, the great shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I have a shepherd who leads us, who makes us to lie down, who takes us places that sometimes we may not want to go, but always brings us through because he is a good God and a great shepherd and a good shepherd. He always does this. When we come to the very last part of the last verse, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, we have the great climax to everything that David was teaching us about walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't have a greater ending than what we have in this magnificent beautiful psalm that we've been studying. So this morning I want to take you into the portals of heaven as it were and I want you to see what it means to dwell in the house of the Lord uh, forever and ever. First thing I need to tell you is that dwelling in the house of the Lord is personal. The scripture tells us these words in this passage David suddenly proclaims I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see that personal pronoun? I will dwell. You can put your name there. You can make that your personal pronoun. You can pray this for your family members. You can take this and you can make this personal and you can personalize it as you intercede for others. Lord, I pray that... That, that Joe will reach the point that Joe will dwell forever in the house of the Lord. You can pray for lost people with this. You can pray this. You can praise God with this. Why, this is one of the greatest personal pronouns that you can have. But I need you to say, here's something right now. I cannot stand in for my family. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I can only speak this in a personal way. I love my family. I'd do anything for my family. Anything at all. But one thing I cannot do is stand in for them and be their substitute 
in heaven. I can't do that. They only have one. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot stand in for you. I can't claim that you will dwell forever in the house of the Lord. Only you can claim that for yourself. I love you. I would do many things for you. But one of those things I cannot do is stand in for you in terms of this declaration. I can only, ladies and gentlemen, answer for myself. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, your relationship with God happens personally. I want to tell you something. God has done everything possible for you to have a relationship with Him. Do you recognize that? Do you realize that God has done every single thing possible for you to be rightly related to Him? I want to tell you about William Washington Spencer. William Washington Spencer, or Spence as everybody called him, was a man who was taken to jail at one point in his life. And there he was, day in and day out in that jail. He, the people would come to see him, but he was locked up in the jail. They brought him his three squares a day, but there he was in the jail. One day, the district attorney went back looking through the old records and discovered that for years and years, William Washington Spencer had lived in that jail and never been charged of anything. Never. They said, Spence, you're free to go. The jail is open. There's no charge against you anymore. You're free to go. You know what he did? He said, no, sir, I like my jail. I want to stay in this jail. I'll die in this jail. And William Washington Spencer died at the age of 105 in a jail in Arkansas because he preferred living in the jail to being free. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're not a person that prefers being locked up than being free because my Lord Jesus Christ has done everything for you to be free. You can be free this morning. If you've never turned from your sin and put your faith in Jesus, this very morning, you can do what the choir and the drama team just presented to us. You can kneel at the feet of Jesus Christ and you can trust the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be free from the jail that holds you this morning. And you can say with the rest of us, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now listen to me. You're going to dwell somewhere forever. You're going to dwell somewhere forever. Why not dwell in the house of the Lord forever? Amen? Why not be with Him forever? What a great thing that God has offered for us. So let me ask you, have you come to a place where you know for certain if you died right now, you'd spend eternity in heaven? You just answered that in your heart. Some of you want to complicate it and say, what do you mean by that? I mean what I just asked. Have you come to a place that if you died right now, you know for certain that you'd spend eternity in heaven? If you said, I hope so, then we need to talk. If you said maybe, then we need to talk. If you said no, then we need to talk. But I'm telling you, your answer, the Holy Spirit gave you already in your heart. And we need, to, we need to have that assurance that we can say, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dwelling in the house of the Lord is not only personal. Dwelling in the house of the Lord is practical. Did you know that? Why, it's a wonderful thing. The Bible says, I will dwell. Do you see that word dwell? That's what he's speaking of right there. Now, how many of you live on the street? Raise your hand. On the street? How many of you are homeless? We saw some homeless folks out in uh, Phoenix, didn't we, Jeremy? I mean, we would have to sometimes walk around the homeless people while we were walking up and down through that city of more than a million people, uh, 1.7 million people, 1.6 million, 98% uh, of which, there's plants trying to attack me back here. 
98% of which are, are, are lost and headed for hell. But there were a number of homeless people. Every evening as you went out, you would find the homeless people on the street. They had nowhere. They had nothing. But every one of us has a place that we dwell, don't we? Mine's right over there, 406 North 37. Some of y'all live on the other side of town. Some of you live north of here. Some of you live on this side. But all of us that are here today, we have a place that we call home. You see, when it talks about dwelling in the house of the Lord, listen to me. When it speaks about dwelling in the house of the Lord, it's not speaking necessarily about your physical address. Now that I tripped you with that, it's speaking about the household of the Lord. And it's talking about abiding with the Lord. Where do you live? I live with the Lord. I dwell with the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The beautiful thing that the sheep could say is, there's my shepherd and that's where I live. I live with him, with my shepherd. And you see, we can point to Jesus and we can say that we live with him. In other words, you make yourself at home with the Lord and the Lord makes himself at home with you. Can I show you a passage of scripture? Look over at John uh, 15. Would you just look there for a second? John 15. Let me show you some words here in John 15 that I think will, will speak to your heart. We're just going to begin in verse 1. We're going to read through these, but I'm going to make emphasis on a certain words that are here. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser, the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. I can't wait, by the way, to be able to preach this passage to you. Keep reading. Verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. And by the way, ye there in King James means y'all, okay? I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Now we're going to stop right there. I'd like to preach the whole thing. But I kept using a word over and over in there that starts with an A, abide. You see, the Hebrew the Hebrew uh, word is yashav, and it would be translated into Greek as abide, or into an English as abide, the Greek equivalent thereof. And so you see, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at this, when we talk about dwelling in the house of the Lord, we're talking about abiding with the Lord. We're talking about Him with us and us with Him, that we make ourselves at home with the Lord. You know, I've pastored in, in a number of diff different places, and I've been to a number of different homes and visited a lot of people, and some of those homes I walk in, and I feel so much at home. I feel like I could even just stay there right up till bedtime and lay down on the floor, or maybe they'd open a door and offer me a bed. In fact, used to be with my grandparents' generation, they'd say, well, why don't you spend with us? You know what I'm saying? And you just felt at home where you were. But on the other side of that coin, I've walked into some homes and I've gone to sit down and I've looked and thought, should I sit down on that couch? That couch doesn't look like a sitable couch. It doesn't look like they would appreciate it if I sat on that furniture. In fact, some homes I've been in, they said, why don't we visit in this room? In other words, that room's off limits, preacher. We don't want you in there. Oh, James Messer. Y'all remember James Messer? Some of you do. He told a story about going to a house one time with one of his deacons that he knew was bad to drink. And he, uh, he said, I'll catch him. I'll catch him. He said, let's just go to the kitchen and sit around the kitchen table and we'll drink ice water in there. And this was the time when they kept a pitcher of ice water inside the refrigerator, not have the, the machines like we do now where you just walk up to the door and stick your glass under it. You know, some of y'all look at me like I'm crazy. It would be in a nice glass pitcher, and that water would be so cold and so good, 36 degrees, which is 
average temperature inside a refrigerator, sometimes 34. Sometimes they freeze up too. Anyway, there it was, and old James Messer knew that that man had his, his, his cans of beer in that refrigerator. And he knew he needed to catch them. And he said, why, you know, Brother Jones, it's just so hot here. It's just so, I believe I'll get me another glass of water. And he'd head for the Oh, no, 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 preacher, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. You don't worry about it, you just stay seated right where you are. You know, I've been in homes where people didn't want you to feel at home in their home. I went to one home up outside of Huntsville when we lived in Tennessee, and I walked up to the house and knocked on the door, and when the man opened the door, I started to step forward and shake my hands with him. He stepped out against me and let me know he wasn't even going to shake my hand. I didn't feel at home with him. Not even a hello. Just a how come, you know, why did I show up here? Anyway, with the Lord, you can make yourself feel at home. God wants you to feel at home with him. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dwelling with the Lord means you draw your strength from the Lord. Dwelling with the Lord, his place is a place of refuge and rest. It's a place that you can relax. It's a place you can take your shoes off and be yourself in his presence. So dwelling in the house of the Lord is personal, it's practical, but it's also positional. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Now we've already talked about the house, talking about uh, referring to a household, to a family. Ladies and gentlemen, you, if you're born again, are in the family of God. Did you hear that? You're in the family of God. There was a time we sang that back in the uh, several years ago. I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God. And we'd sing that song over and over and over. And sometimes we'd run around shaking hands with one another while we sang it, you know. And, and just talk about we didn't always look glad to be in, part of the, in the family of God, but we were. Why, I'm part of God's flock. He bought me. This is the great truth. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Beloved, now are you sons of God. And if you're born again, you're a daughter of God or you're a son of God. That's the great truth about every single one of us here. If you didn't turn from your sin, listen to me. If you've never turned from your sin and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, are you listening? You're part of another family. John 8, 44, Jesus talking to the Pharisees when they were having one of their deep conversations in that great passage where Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. In that passage of scripture, they said, we've never been in bondage. He said, you're in bondage right now. In fact, not only are you in bondage, you are, you are of your father, the devil, for you do the works of the devil. You see, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not in the family of God, you're in the family of Satan. Did you hear that? Oh, you may not like that. You may disagree with that, but I'm telling you that's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not in the family of God, there's only one other family that you can be in. <clears throat> the Pharisees were religious people. You can be religious and belong to the family of Satan. In fact, you reckon those folks that attacked us on 9-11 were not religious? They were practicing their religion. But I don't expect to see them in heaven. I don't expect they're part of the family of God. The man that killed 90 people in Oslo, Norway, do you think, even though he had the name, the label Christian, on his, on his uh, Facebook page? Do you believe that that so-called conservative Christian was a part of the family of God? By no means. You're either part of the family of God or the family of his enemy. You can be baptized and not in the family of God. Did you realize that? Paul was going along and he came up to this place and there in this place near Ephesus he found an entire group of quote believers why they were having a worship service they were having a hallelujah time 
And he said, when did you meet the Lord? They said, what are you talking about? They didn't know who the Lord was. Why, when he got through preaching, they did. But at that point, they had been baptized, but they were lost. You see, your baptism has nothing to do with your salvation, ladies and gentlemen. And so you can be baptized and still be part of the family of the enemy of God. You must turn from your sin and place your faith in Jesus, place your faith in the full and finished work of Jesus Christ in order for you to be placed in the family of God. But I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I am part of the family of God when I'm born again. And then there's one more thing I want to tell you. Not only is it personal and practical and positional, dwelling in the house of the Lord is permanent. Isn't that great? I will dwell in the house of the Lord till I mess up. Right? No, forever. I have some friends that got evicted from their house. We lived down there in South America, Peru. We were in southern Peru. And these folks were just plain evicted from their house. Isn't that sad? You're not evicted from the house of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. When God says, you're my son, you're my daughter, he never takes it back. Never. And you're in a permanent relationship with God.